Palace, uh, who will be presenting QRL 201-01, a multi-center randomized double-blind placebo-controlled multiple ascending dose study to evaluate the safety and tolerability of QRL 201 in ALS. Welcome. I think you're still on mute. There you go. Well, it's my pleasure to be uh, sharing this with you. Let me just share the proper um, slides in the proper format and we're good to go. Perfect. So in this context, uh, I am Angela Genge, as, as many of you know, and I'm sharing a, a new program um, it is a program run by Kiralis. Fortunately, the trial now has a name, Anchor, uh, so it'll be easier to say the next time. Um, and I appreciate the time today. So this is these are my uh, disclosures, and we get to the meat of the matter. Uh, so Stassman um, has been recognized now since 2019 after breakthrough um, research was presented by two different labs. I'll go into that in a minute. Um, and since that time, um, it has been recognized that Stassman 2 is consistently decreased in ALS uh, patient um, data sets, including those in which the um, the driver of the disease process is actually genetic. The work that was done that really uh, broke through in the field was done uh, by two different labs and published simultaneously, Kevin Egan's lab out of Harvard and Don Cleveland's lab out of California, both demonstrated in different experiments that Stassman II levels were consistently decreased in sporadic patients, and it was connected with the loss of TD, uh, nuclear TDP43 and the um, mislocalization of TDP43 in the cytoplasm. The uh, work out of John Cleveland's lab demonstrated um, abundant truncated Stathman II uh, RNA in the spinal cord and brain of patients with ALS. And a, uh, a second uh, experiment demonstrated that um, with the loss of Stasma 2 by uh, TDP43, um, that if you restored Stasma levels, you could actually rescue uh, many aspects of the phenotype that, that is uh, pathognomonic of TDP43 pathology. So the concept is that um, in ALS, in um, most sporadic and at least a subset of genetic forms of ALS, those of uh, C9ORF72. We start out with a healthy motor neuron, but in the disease state, you get mislocalization of TDP43. And in fact, TDP43 accurately gets in the cytoplasm. Along with this pathology um, that has been demonstrated by these groups and others, that you get a cryptic exon splicing with the, uh, with the uh, loss of nuclear TDP43. And you get um, degradation of, um, of uh, stasmin and in fact, a loss of uh, full length stasmin. This loss of full length stasmin has also been demonstrated in, um, in a st um, stasmin microarray. And this cryptic splicing um, leads us to a, um, the design of our molecule and the clinical trial, which in fact is um, designed to restore normal levels of full length stasmin. Uh, Clotilde recently at Target ALS actually uh, presented several, uh, several experiments looking at the role of stasmin, not only in the motor neuron itself, but in neuromuscular junction integrity, which may also be important in the effect of a Stasman regulating ASO. The investigational product rationale of 201 is uh, that of um, is based on the work in the lab of uh, using QRL 201 to rescue um, a um, stem cell. Uh, IPS cell line model 
of um, ALS with a TDP43 knockdown and using the uh, QRL, uh, QRL 201, we get an induction of uh, increase in full length Stathman 2 and a reduction of the cryptic uh, transcript expression that is connected with this change in the TDP43 pathology and the, um, and the change in normal Stathman, uh, the production of normal Stathman. The experiments uh, that have been further, uh, further explain um, the effect of the ASO, which is a splice switching ASO. And with this ASO, we can rescue the TDP43 knockdown um, model of um, ALS in the um, iPS cell lines. And we can recover the um, percentage of normal length uh, stasmin in these cell lines. And this can be demonstrated a number of ways, including the um, in the top right uh, of the slide where we get a significant increase in relative uh, protein production of stasmin. So with the, this ASO, we're proposing that ALS is a stasmin to loss of function disease in which um, is based on the evidence that you see most consistently decreased gene expression in sporadic ALS of Stasmin, and that Stasmin is the gene most significantly regulated by TDP43 in humans, and therefore TDP43 pathology uh, leads to the production of cryptic Stasmin and rescue of Stasmin to full-length Stasmin restores the um, biology and uh, the functional outcome. In the human stem cell models, restoring stasmin decreases the, the, the uh, consequence of the cryptic stasmin uh, demonstrates both uh, restoration of neuronal repair and in fact also Golgi transport. And this has been confirmed by a number of groups, not just uh, ours. In a mouse model, um, Restoring human stasmin to the mouse mock knockout brings back normal innervation at the neuromuscular junction and normal function in the muscle in the mouse. So in patients, loss of stasmin has been linked to both disease onset and disease progression in ALS. So the product rationale is um, is quite uh, specific. Um, the concept again is misplay and misplaced stasmin uh, due to the mislo of TDP43 and restoration of normal stasmin production corrects uh, the um, uh, downstream effect of this um, TDP43 pathology. We believe that up to 90% of ALS patients may benefit. And we're really looking at reducing disease progression using a, a precision medicine approach, uh, approach to this, this uh, trial and this development. The um, QRL201 is an antisense oligonucleotide that will be um, given through an intrathecal delivery system. It has been demonstrated to be generally safe and effective. Um, and with the development and approval of Nusinersen, we um, and the development of Tofersen, we feel that this um, program is well, going to be well tolerated in ALS patients. The proof of the effect of 201 has been deduced in the uh, pluripotent derived stem cells, um, which have been engineered to have TDP43 pathology. We believe this approach um, in ALS for this particular rapidly progressive disease um, is as follows. Yes. Our primary objective is uh, safety and tolerability of multiple doses of uh, QRL201 with the endpoints being adverse events and serious adverse events associated with QRL201. The secondary objective is the uh, plasma pharmacokinetic profile of 201 after multiple doses with a multiple dose PK. The trial design will be a MAD with including up to eight cohorts. Our expectation is that we will complete all eight cohorts if our um, if our maximum 
maximal efficacious dose is discuss, is uh, found at a lower um, dose than the top dose in this schema, the remaining cohorts will continue with the maximal efficacious dose. The uh, electric, um, the lightning bolts uh, indicate that in the top four uh, cohorts, we will be introducing in, on top of uh, standard and exploratory biomarkers, we will be introducing electrophysiology on all participants in order to actually demonstrate target engagement at a different level. The uh, proof of mechanism, proof of concept and proof of mechanism um, component of this adaptive design is really the top four cohorts. And we expect that this will contribute significantly to the design of the pivotal program. The dose, not only the uh, dose we will move forward, but also the, uh, the patient inclusion into that pivotal program. The biomarkers, as I mentioned, will be extensive and the traditional clinical set assessments will be included. Eligibility criteria will include um, all patients uh, with the SVC above 50%. We do require evidence of lower motor neuron involvement and um, the patients have to be able to tolerate a lumbar puncture and obviously have to have a clear diagnosis of ALS by either LS Coriel or Gold Close criteria. The exclusion will, uh, will include an exclusion for SOD1 and FUS uh, patients as the pathophysiology of those two uh, groups of patients um, is not felt to be primarily driven by TDP43 pathology. And there are better programs um, that are ongoing for both of these uh, patients with both of these mutations. All of the other uh, exclusion criteria are, are typical of our current uh, trial designs at the moment. Um, and we are taking this program throughout the US, Canada, the UK, Italy, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands at the moment. So this will be an international program. The um, startup is actually underway as we speak with the first investigator meeting happening this weekend. Um, and uh, we aim to have top line results by the end of 2025. With that, I'd like to thank you and I'm open for questions, Fernando. Thank you for a fascinating uh, presentation, a nice tie in to um, what Dr. Egan presented yesterday. And Really, it's, it's great to see such rapid clinical development out of basic discovery that just was pretty recent, which is really cool. Um, a, a few different questions. We have one out of the chat, which again, I had two. Um, is there a, a strategy or a plan for Curalis to, this is from Dr. Brown, uh, for Curalis to define uh, target engagement um, with QRL 201, um, measuring full length transcript protein or cryptic exon? Um, hi, Bob. Yes, um, and it's in development. So um, it won't surprise anyone on this call that we will be including neurofilaments and other um, currently accepted and validated clinical markers of disease progression. Uh, we are uh, we under development are working on a more specific Stasman to related biomarkers. Um, uh, another question: um, the you you alluded to earlier um, the possible role of Stathman in neuromuscular junction uh, occupancy function. Um, I haven't seen those data. I'm I'm interested. Was that narrative coming from a potential muscle side um, uh, function, or was it still focused on the neuron? So Fernando, this is really out of my territory. It's in the mouse. I don't do mice, mice as everyone knows. Um, and Clotilde made the presentation in March. Um, but my, my re recollection is that it, it included um, the entire neuromuscular junction in her in her uh, experiment, so it was not only 
um, primarily we think, but not only the, the motor neuron itself and the axon itself. It, it appears to play an integral role in the integrity of the neuromuscular junction, this protein. Um, uh, a couple of questions from the chat. Um, was, uh, is there any mouse PK or PD preclinical data for this program? That we have some evolving PK and PT, PD data. And we have, obviously, we're, we have finished our IND enabling studies. Uh, so we also have some information from uh, the non-human primates. But as everyone knows, Stathman is, there isn't a non-human primate model for Stathman. Uh, so what we're really doing is looking at surrogate markers. Um, so in our first uh, few cohorts, we'll be doing fairly intensive um, sample collection. For, to further uh, further understand the PK and PD, and the and the electrophysiology is really um, I think important here. Um, it's something that we have tried over decades to find the best um, electrophys program to use in these uh, clinical development programs, and we really have spent a lot of time. Um, discussing with Brian Wanger exactly how um, and his results from the retigabine program and really uh, moving that, uh, his knowledge of uh, how to implement or operationalize electrophys to really have greater understanding. Uh, so we will be looking at not only uh, the motor neurons itself, but also uh, the neuromuscular junction in the form of repetitive stim to see about whether we can pick up a, a signal that will help us understand the biology more. Thank you. And, and I have one more question. Um, I understand the, the rationale um, for moving forward with an ASO. There's proof of concept with an ASO to get to uh, appropriate splicing of a target like this. Um, do you, are you, or do you know of any groups that would also be considering using a viral vector to simply express uh, Stathman II um, as a therapeutic approach? I don't know of anyone, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. Um, I think that that's, um, that's deep underground right now. <laughs> well, thank you very much for a great uh, presentation and a great conversation. Thanks, Fernando. We'll move on to our next uh, presentation.